Good afternoon. I'm ready to go into the 38th day of the book of Ezekiel. Father, we thank you for your word today. We thank you that you have given us everything that you will do so that we'll know that you said it and did it all by this book that you gave us to learn from. Help us to see the things that we are to see and anything that we don't see correctly, show us how to see it. And if I see anything that you didn't say, correct me and bring it to my attention and I'll make the adjustments. In Jesus' name, help me to be a good reader. In Jesus' name, I pray, amen. Okay. We are talking about, let's go straight into the word. And the word of the Lord came unto me saying, I like this about Jer um, Ezekiel because he constantly is living in a life where God can constantly speak to him. And God goes from one um, way of trying to reach people to another way, from acting, from telling him don't even cry and your wife is going to die, and, and then speaking to uh, what he saw as angels with, you know, different faces. Um, it, it just very hard things that some people may draw back from. Ezekiel was the man God made for it. He said, he said you did it with some hard-headed people, but I am going to make your head harder than theirs. So that was nothing that Ezekiel did not do that God asked him to do. And he didn't have to do it, but he did. And in the 38th chapter, God is getting ready to talk to him about future events, things that are going to happen that the people of God should be made aware of. These things have not happened. These are things that's going to happen. Let's see what he said. And the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, set your face against Gog, the land of Magog, the chief prince of Meshach and Tubal, and prophesy against him. Those names right there are not very familiar. They're mentioned in the word a little bit. But when I read these words, I said, even though they may not be as famous as the land of Assyria, Moabite, Edom, but these were people that God said, I see. And I know what you're up to. And I'm way ahead of you. I told you in chapter 37, nobody's going to ever bother um, Israel again. And you didn't believe my word. So these people, and I got a map here that I looked it up just so that I could see where these places might be. Some of them we're going to talk about are already listed. For instance, uh, Persia, we heard of. Um, Cush, we heard of. And right up on the Moscow is Meshach and then Magog is they have it in where Russia is in that area. But it's in the Middle East area or and then part of it is in Africa. And these are the places and I, I had no idea that other people had wanted to know the same thing. And I looked at chapter 38, I said, What are these places located? And I pulled this map. And it showed me the area, but what was, what got my attention was, uh, I don't want to tell you what got my attention, but something got my attention about this map. And these are the people that God is, he, he said, let's just see what he said. He said, and say thus said the Lord God, behold, I am against you, O God, the chief prince of Meshach and Tubal. I'm against you. Anytime God said I'm against you, that means that's a problem. And I will turn you back and put hooks into your jaws, and I will bring you forth and all thine army, horses and horsemen, all of them clothed with all sorts of armor, a great company with bucklers and shields, all of them handling swords. So God is saying, this is going to happen. Excuse me, Parker! Parker! The Uber is out there. And so God is saying that um, all these people are going to come dressed in their uh, clothes of uniform to fight against his people. But God is saying it's not going to happen. He said, I'm telling you way before time. So you have documentation by my word. It'll never happen. But bring them on. I told you this. 
if, 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 if the people had read chapter 37, God said, nobody going to ever come against Judah again. But these folk, I'm going to name them again, Persia, <laughs> Ethiopia, Libya, with them, all of them with shield and helmet. Okay, go in your room and get ready. Persia, Ethiopia, go like the front door again. I'm online, I'll call you back. She got it. It's here. She got it. Oh, um, I apologize. It's, it's like going on today. He said, and I will turn you back and put hooks in your jaws, and I will bring you forth, and all your honor, army, horses, and horsemen, all of them clothed with all sorts of armor. He, they, they're not just going to have on red, white, and blue. I'm just saying, not red, white, and blue. Whatever color, they're going to be from all different kind of places. He said, it's going to be a great company with bucklers, and they're going to be ready to fight with shields, all of them handling sword. These people going to know how to fight. He said, this is going to happen. Where, where are you telling me it's going to happen? Persia, Ethiopia, and Libya with them, all of them with shields in heaven. When I saw they recognized the people from Africa going to be with them, I knew then it's going to look like they're united. Ethiopia, Libya, Persia with them, all of them with shields in heaven. So all of those on this map right here, it shows Asian, Russia area, uh, all those surrounding area are going to work together some kind of way according to the word of God and fight against, come to fight against Israel. But the 37th chapter said, no, it's not. That's why you have to read the word in order. He said, in a place named Gohan, all of his bands, the house of Tagoma, of the north quarters and all of his bands and many people with them. He said, these folk going to get together and be thou prepared and prepare for yourself. He said, I want you to be prepared to fight since you're going to have all these folk. You and all your company that are assembled unto you and be thou a guard unto them. He said, I'm telling you, he needs to set it up. I already said, don't mess with, it's not, nobody going to mess with these people again. He said, when? Verse 80, after many days you shall be visited. And the latter years you shall come into the land that is brought back from the sword. Talking about Egypt, uh, Israel after that exile. Against, he said, coming back from the sword, a land that is brought back from the sword and gathered out of many people. I went and got my people. Some I pulled here, some I pulled here. These are Israelites against the mountain of Israel, which have been always wasted. I've been beating up these folk a long time, but it is brought forth out of the nations and they shall dwell safely all of them. Every last one of the people that went into exile will come back and nobody going to bother them again. Okay, I'm big your army, it says the Lord. Thou shalt ascend. He's going to come up how? And come like a storm. He's going to come up out of nowhere. You shall be like a cloud to cover the land. You and all your bands and many people with you. He said, I'm talking to these folk and I'm prophesying telling Ezekiel to talk about what's going to happen uh, and then some people said this is when Jesus is going to reign during that millennium, millennium time. I don't get off into all that because I have to walk with the word long enough to know I'm not that smart. But I do know that he said this is going to happen. I'm going to keep with the words that he said. And he said, you, the, and they probably right, but being a student at, at my age, I, I have to stay in my place. Then he said, thus says the Lord God, it shall also come to pass that at the same time shall things come into your mind and you shall think an evil thought. You're going to think about this. You're thinking about what you're ready to do. And you shall say, I will go up into the land that's unwalled villages. I will go to them that are at rest, that dwell safely, all of them dwelling without walls and having neither bars nor gates. I'm going to go in there and attack a place that, that, that uh, Think they don't need walls. To take spoil and to take a prey, to turn thine hand upon the desolate places that are now inhabited and upon the people that are gathered out of the nations which have gotten cattle goods that dwell in the midst of the land. He said, I'm getting ready to attack Israel. God in the 37th chapter said, no, you're not. Who coming? Sheba, Dedan, and the merchants of Tosh. Well, these are, this is what they're going to say. Sheba and Dedan and the merchants of Tosh with all the young lions there 
She said unto you, are you come to take the spoil? You come to you come to take stuff from us? Have you gathered your company to take the prey? Are you finna get us, you finna arrest us again? To carry away our seven gold and take away cattle and goods to take a great spoil? He said, they're gonna ask you, you, you come to, to, to fill us down again. He said, therefore, son of man, prophesy and me speak firmly to the two and say unto God, the people that think that they're getting ready to do that, thus said the Lord God. He said, tell them I said this. And that day when my people of ill and dwell saved, it, shall thou not know it? He said, don't you know that when I told them they're going to be saved, don't you not, do you not know I meant that? And you shall come from the place out of the north. I'm telling you where you're coming from. I'm telling you details. That's why I got to tell you this. This is what he said. I like it because see this. If you shall, and you shall come from the place out of the north parts, you and many people with you, all of them riding upon horses, a great company and a mighty army. He said, no, I'm letting you know how you're going to come. And you shall come up against my people of Israel as a cloud to cover the land. It shall be in the latter days, that means many days from now, and I will bring you again against my land that the heathens may know me when I shall be sanctified in you. You're going to recognize I ain't nothing to play with. Oh God, before their eyes. He said, me in you. Thus says the Lord God, are you he? He said, do you remember? Thus says the Lord God, are thou he of whom I have spoken in the old time by my servants, the prophets of Israel, which prophesied in those days many years that I would bring thee against them 3,000 years before now. Did you hear me tell Ezekiel write you down? He said, my question, he said, did you read the word? Did you not know that I already said how this, how this fight going in? And it shall come to pass at the same time when God shall come against the land of Israel, when God, though, who is God? I don't know who God is. Because it hasn't been written a whole lot about them. But I do know God said they will exist at this time to try some. A lot of people say it's going to be, I don't know if it's going to be Russia. I don't know. That's what commentators say. But let's stick with the word that as a child will. And it should come to pass at the same time when God, and the only time I looked up God, I saw those guys, those little kids or people playing games online. Shall come against the land of Israel. I know somebody getting ready to get beat down. <laughs> said the Lord. That my fury, my anger shall come up in, in my face. That my fury shall come up in my face. When you see my anger. <laughs> or in my jealousy and in the fire of my wrath have I spoken. <laughs> Surely in that day there shall be a great shaking in the land of Israel. He says there's going to be some shaking in there. And he's going to shake so much that the fish of the sea, fishes of the sea, the fowl, the birds of the heaven, and the beasts of the field, and all the creeping things that creep upon the earth, and all the men that are upon the face of the earth shall shake at my presence. He says, I'm ready for this fight. I already see it 3,000 years before I see it. Well, I don't know if it's 3,000 years, but I'm reading it today, which is about 3,000 years that he's that I know he's spoken from this day, but the day that he's going to do it, whenever he's going to do it, he knows. He says, shall shake my, at my presence and the mountain shall be thrown down and the steep places shall fall and every wall shall fall to the ground. He said, the day that you bring that army in going to have a sneak attack on them people, you will meet me. And I will call for a sword against him throughout all my mountains. Said the Lord God, every man's sword shall be against his brother. He said, y'all going to fight each other. And I will plead against him with pestilence. I'm, uh, I'm going to put a disease on you. And with blood, that means going to be some fighting. And I'm going to send rain upon him and upon his bands and upon the many people that are with him. And overflowing rain and great hailstones, fire and brimstone. And I looked at fire and brimstone, guess what that was? Suffer and gunpowder. Suffer, gun, suffer. And it said it was gunpowder. And he said, when I say fire, hit that suffer with the fire and see when it sounds like a gun shoot. Thus will I magnify myself. He said, I'm going to magnify myself. I'm going to make myself known. First, I gave it to you in writing. And then I'm going to bring it to pass. 
And then you're going to match my writing with what I said. And then you're going to what? And sanctify myself. It means I'm going to keep my word. Cause that may, that's because I'm clean. And I will be, in, in other words, nothing coming out of my mouth that I'm not going to do. And I will be known in the eyes of many nations. All them dead bodies. And they shall know that I am the Lord. So God is telling, he said, I'm telling you, leave these folk alone. He said, but you're going to muster some up and these people, are gonna, you're going to have Africa, Asia, Europe. Now, one thing I didn't see, and this got my attention. I did not see the United States. And then I start thinking. This is me thinking now. I said, I didn't see that the Western world, as far as the North and South America, I didn't see them on this map. And I start thinking. This is me thinking that. I'm just, just my thoughts. We're not in this fight. And one, we're not in this fight. I wonder will we be still a land that is even not even known during this time. Because when uh, Nebuchadnezzar got the children of Israel and brought them into exile, he said to them, he said, y'all didn't obey your God. Which made me think, well, as I read this, People that know our God and don't trust our God, but they know our God well enough to know that we are not obeying what they know about our God. Some religions, okay, when Jonah was on that boat on the ship, and that, that pilot or that, that guy that was over the ship, he said, he told all those say, say, sailors, people that were on the ship, he said, y'all get a bring your God. I don't care what God did, just, just talk to him. And then he saw Jonah sleep, and he wanted to know why you ain't praying. And then Jonah goes down, he's on. Like, just throw me overboard. He said, no, I ain't finna do that right now. That ain't, that ain't, that ain't got to do that. We ain't got to go that far. But then he saw that storm kick up. And then he started casting that cargo and all that different stuff off that ship, trying to make that ship be at peace. And then finally, Jonah's out. I'm trying to tell you, that throw me over, boy. Why Jonah ain't going to jump? But anyway. <laughs> and as soon as they had to get rid of Jonah, he said, well, you got to go. And the Bible said that, that, that water became calm. What got my attention with that was he understood the God that he didn't trust. He understood that I don't believe your God, but I know this about your God. See, my God don't act like that based on what people think. He said, but it's something about your God because I remember that your God destroyed a city, destroyed the city of Sodom and the city of Gomorrah. He, 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 he said, because y'all doing some crazy stuff. So I was wondering if the United States, this is just me talking, this is just my thoughts. The world really don't respect the nation that it sees that it's going to kill itself. I have a friend that went to a, a country and she was a teacher. She said she bought a great big old oversized television, maybe you know, a big TV, that's all I remember. I don't remember the inches. But anyway, she said um, she got ready to pay for it. Being from America, she was in Dubai teaching there. And she said she told the guy, he said, we're going to deliver it at a certain time. She said, well, I'm not at home at that time. I'll be at work. He said, what does it mean? What does it mean? He said, I'm going to put a string on top of this thing. And if that string is not on top of this TV, and we don't dress it up, we're just going to put it outside your door. And if that string moves, you call me. She said, when she said she had never heard of that because you're coming from our, the United States, where you just can't leave stuff like this. He said, over here, Try me. And she said when she got home, the string and everything, and the TV was out there. At, if they delivered at 9 o'clock and she got home at 5 o'clock, the TV was sitting right there. She's not used to that. She said, but they worship. The way they worship is that you don't, they, in other words, they don't tolerate foolishness. 
So when a, some nations look at the United States and they think that it's ran by foolishness, they can't. You say I can't take you serious. I can't. I can't take that you all make laws out of sin. And your God that we know gonna kill you based on what we know about it. We've seen him make his moves. So if you are going to call on your God that you don't respect and don't do what he said, we don't understand it. We just watch y'all. You don't send a lot of ammunition on people that that eventually gonna be dissolved. Because he said, according to your God, like the, like the, the uh, wise men went to seek Jesus, according to the timing, there's a savior. Somebody is reading his word that don't believe it. But because we got all these strange ways of believing, it's, it's something about the way y'all believe. Your God ain't gonna let that happen. So we don't really have to put up a big fight with you because you you kind of one of them classes that I saw that you gonna lose her job. You don't have to do nothing. You just sit there and watch because they gave all the instructions. They got the right tools in a classroom, but she don't know how to handle little kids. And every teacher like they lose their job. Because it's, it's, it's a downward spiral, and you see yourself going down, and other nations just sit there and watch you and say, you, your God said don't do that. Your God said don't. And they can't trust the God that we say we serve because it doesn't match what he said based on what they see us do. So those people who have these gods who, who they really think, I'm really obeying my God, because when you, you, steal, you steal something me, we cut your hand off. We, our God said, do it today. But you have a God that's unknown to us, and some kind of way you ain't on this map, and I wonder why this map, what? I mean, I wouldn't want to be on this map, because these folk right here coming against somebody going to get beat down by the God that we serve. But that's just my curiosity. Is where where are we? But I because I know we're dying every day. I know we don't fear God. And it's not so much that the people that are lost that are doing this, it's because the people that have the right to read this book won't read it. It all boils back down to education. If God telling us in Ezekiel 38, I don't know what 39 is gonna say, but I do know this. If 38 said I'm gonna do this in the future, and I live in the future from the time that he spoke here, whether it's in the time that Jesus comes and rules and reign over the earth during that time, all I know is, is he said it's gonna happen. Where are we during the time? Or were we, on the other hand, could it be that we got ourselves together and there was no need to mention us because we wouldn't do that no way? I mean, that's another thought. As the United States, we finally got together. And so by the time these nations moved in on Israel like that, our names are not listed because we said we ain't doing that. But he said all the supporting allies that come with this guy named Magog and God, he said, you going down. He said, you will not touch that string on top of that TV. He said, you're going to come in like a cloud. And the next thing you know, you're going to try to push your way in. He said, I'm already ready for you. I said, he said, you told yourself a lie. Well, I said that. He said, you said to yourself. He said, um, you already done lied to yourself saying you're going to do these things. You planning. He said, but I already told Israel, after that exile, ain't nobody going to ever bother you again. Not like that. Now, if you do what, get yourself in trouble, then it's not that I am going to send correction to you. That's your own choice. But as far as a nation being under what you went through after that exile, you're going to learn your lesson. You're going to stop that bowing down to the crazy gods. I'm not a stick and I'm not a stone. I made sticks and stones. Don't get it twisted. But the only reason I see our nation sinking is because we don't know the recipe of God for living. When we learn what God said, put in there. Don't put that in there. Don't, don't, don't make it that long. Do this. When we do those things that God said, then you're going to change the communities of this, this, these people. But we so big at 
having. Lord, I thank you today. I can't even, Lord, Lord, I, the only thing that I know to do is ask you to forgive us of our sins, of our lack of understanding because we don't want to be educated. We're doing the same thing that you told Jeroboam not to get yourself entangled with all that crazy stuff, and we have done it. And all I know to do is ask you, Lord, forgive us and open up our eyes so that we can see that we don't have to live like this. We don't want to participate in what you say is going to be in our names or not listed among those unless some kind of way we in, the, in there some kind of way. I'm not sure, but I, did, I specifically I did not see us and I wonder why or were we still in existence because as we are today, we are ripe for judgment. And you would be just in your move. Lord, save our nation. Help us to see your word. Not only see it, but to obey, obey it's an indication that we believe it. In Jesus' name, I pray, amen.